So we have this integral and we want to reverse it to make it dx, dy, and dz. In order to do that, let's go ahead and draw this out. There's the y-axis over there. So first we'll notice that dx goes from zero to two. And there's really not much we could do about that. So we'll start there. Then we can go for this equation, y equals 10 minus 5x, which will give us, if x equals 0, y is 10. And then if we, x equals 2, y is 0. So we can even connect these points here. And then we'll get this equation, z equals 7 minus 7 over 2x minus 7 over 10y. And that means that if x and y are 0, then z is 7. So that's going to be up here. And then we could plug in 10 for the y and 2 for the x. And we'll just notice that basically these things will connect and form these little, this little shape. So um, we want to integrate this with this new orientation here. In order to do that, we notice that dz is at the end, so we're just going to go 0 to 7 there. And now we want to try to describe if we were going to integrate all little triangles that are going through here all the way up to the top, how can we describe those triangles with another double integral? So let's try to describe what these little triangles are inside of there. If we had the biggest one, it'd be going 0 to 2, and then here's the 10. And we could integrate from here to there on all the way from 0 to 10, right? Because that would be on the y's on the outside. And on the inside, we would have to go 0. And then we'd have to figure out what that line is in terms of x, that y equals 10 minus 5 or 5x thing. So we'd have to uh, figure out that line. But if we were to start going up, now we're going to get something that's going to start here and you know, end over there. So now the integration is going to be more from here to there. And then uh, we're still going to want to go all the way from 0 to whatever that point is. Not 10, but that point. And if we were to try to describe that point, uh, there's only one other line that we can use. And that was going to be this one. So we can use the new z value that we've discovered, because now z equals something. We can use that in this equation. 7, 1, minus... Uh, we're going to get rid of the the um, the the x's because it's just zero. So we're just going to say y over ten, and now we can divide this by seven, and then we could swap those two, and we'll get uh, y over ten equals one minus z over seven, and then we can multiply this by ten, and so now we've got our new y limit. So that's what we're going to use here: y equals 10 times 1 minus z over 7, going from 0, and we're close. All we need to do is find the, the x limits for the x's. We're going from here to there, and we're still using that same equation, but this time the y actually equals something, so we're going to have to leave everything and just rearrange it in terms of x's. So we're just basically going to say that... Um, z over 7 equals 1 minus x over 2 minus y over 10. And then we can uh, swap those two. So we'll get x over 2 uh, equals 1 minus z over 7 minus y over 10. And then we can multiply this thing by 2. And we'll get our x's. So we're going to go from 0. And then here it's 2 times 1 minus z over 7 minus y over 10. And there we go. We just have to be very careful with how we build the new slice to make sure that our limits are proper because um, we could easily create the wrong shape if we get the wrong limits.